Hey, peeps, this is Ahmed Johnson, and you're listening to Incension Podcast. Down with my three amigos. Keep it tuned in for more, because you ain't heard nothing yet. Welcome to an unsanctioned podcast episode. I'm Luis Vasquez. It's Jay Holland. I'm Julio June. And we will be covering a the lot. last few weeks of wrestling. We're covering a lot. A lot has lot. been going on. A, a lot, lot of beefs. Spicy Nothing settled yet. out there. <laughs> it's hold a on, hold on. spicy we, in the wrestling can we, world. Can we give a shout out to the bird that got Julio in for this one too? The it's owl. The owl was this episode. It, oh, did he get the owl already? He, we got the, oh, the, no way. We, we got How the How are we going to downgrade oh. it from an eagle to an owl? Because oh, we, we, our, budget, our budget is slim, bro. We don't want to put it out there. We are expanding. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Man, we might get a hawk next was, time, but was, we'll see how it goes. It was a it falcon goes. that swooped in and got me this time. Uh, we don't know. Falcons seem to be blowing yeah, leads it around made, It made it halfway here, and then halfway it failed. <laughs> the, good, the good news is he's not riding on a pigeon anymore. Julio June is in the building, No everybody. more pigeons. We, we upgraded. Hey, <laughs> also, here things. on this episode of the Unsanctioned Podcast, we'll be going down with our predictions uh, of the TLC match card. 10 to 11 care match card? What? <laughs> T-Bar's left eye and chili. I know, right? This, you already know, man. This is the Unsection Podcast. We're now signing on to your airwaves. Let's get it. Unsanctioned Podcast. Once again, I'm Luis Vasquez. You can follow me on Twitter at Luis Vasquez 617 Yeah, it's your boy Jay Holland. You can follow me across social media, J-O-C-D, J-A-Y-O-C-I-T-Y, unless it's Facebook at that 781 at the end. It's Julio, period. <laughs> I love it. Yo, Punctuation <laughs> is important. And real quick, you know what I realized that we haven't pushed it? We, we talked about it a couple episodes ago, man. Although we found the official, official opening song for the Unsexual Podcast, is, which is um, uh, Impala and Just Money, Where You At, the Hustle Squad family, you know, my peoples. That's the intro, but outro? We're still looking for your artist submissions, man. Make sure you guys send your submissions for the outro tracks, man. Unsanctioned podcast at gmail.com. Starting out with a beef. Mm. What's beef? A beef in the wrestling world. Not beef from is when a wrestler. You need two cats to go to sleep. Mm. Something like that. Mm. Beef is One cat sense. here apparently needs to go to sleep. So, according to a WWE costume designer, who shall remain nameless on this podcast because for no now. Cares. Are we protecting because someone? No Why are we protecting cares. someone? Okay, so go ahead. Dish Why? it out. Well, no, 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 no. I'm asking you, Louise. Well, anyway, she you said. To be a no, no, don't you run from Before you want to mutter it. her name, because it, it's nonsense. Don't run from it, Louise. It's nonsense. You know, I come from a journalistic background, and we, don't, we need say, the don't want to repeat the names of people who did crimes. You don't Bull want to give them publicity crapper. and all that. So this, this is a crime. She said, not a real crime, but like, you know, like a social crime. I'd rather see Dead Hardy in a match instead of Matt Hardy. Who says that? And so, of course, Reby responds. They get into a Twitter spat. They go back and forth. But this is a WWE employee who's apparently been there for like 20 or 30 years. Ages. What's going on? Why what? is she still there? I'm confused. Hey, you know, I'm not hating on her work. I'm hating on her ethics, her way of conducting business. So publicly, especially, we're all grown. Why well, do that on Twitter when you work for a huge company like WWE? But you know what's funny? This dates back to when the Hardys were a part of TNA. I mean, it, there was accusations of affairs. I mean, it, you got ugly. D- d- it dates back to Shannon Moore. But again, you're working for TNA. It's not It's not the powerhouse, well, the mega corporate house hold of hold WWE. Hold Shannon Moore. Like I said, the fact that it, it, it was the last time anyone's referenced Shannon Moore. <laughs> like no was it WCW when he was a part of what was the name of the little boy band three count, they have? Three count? <laughs> with, with three the count. hurricane <laughs> Evan Courageous oh man my man Evan Courageous <laughs> one two three That's yeah. the, that was their career <laughs> here's, here, here's something I want to point out when it comes to specifically mm-hmm. Reby Hardy mm, sexy beautiful woman yo matter of fact Hardy, my Hardy's a lucky guy Julio but, before we cut you off here we have to we have to add her into the Hall of Fame. Is she the first inducted to the 
unsanctioned podcast hall of fame she absolutely cannot be the first inducted into the <laughs> shot down vixen podcast no, hall that's not even fix it. it's it's the jay the, you were the, shot down the no pull out no pullout crew. She's oh, a well, no, no pullout crew. Hey, well, the, no, there goes Matt no Hardy com. coming on the podcast. The, Thank the, you, Jay. The views and words that you just oh, heard. Are the views and words of Jay. <laughs> I just had hey, to get one section. One section. And no disrespect, <laughs> Matt Hardy. I mean, honestly, it's a compliment because obviously you had two children with her, and you have a great taste in women. And like I said, we respect you and everything you did. But as a man, I got to be honest. Like I said, Rebby, salute to you. You're you're one of the inductees, the first inductee to the no pullout crew. Jay Holland's personal own squad, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, Jay Holland, ladies and gentlemen, not Luis Vasquez. Rebby Hardy. The one thing I want to I want to point out is she is known for controversies. I don't know if you guys remember a few years ago, back in TNA, she had an altercation with Awesome Kong, known as Karma in the WWE universe, where Awesome Kong allegedly beat her ass, beat her up, beat her up pretty bad in the locker room, and had to be pulled off. And you wonder. Is is there something with Rebby Hardy where controversy follows her? Does she have to be mm. a part of controversy? Is there something that draws her to? She seems like a magnet for controversy. I don't want to say a magnet for heat, but a magnet for controversy. Yeah, but she, you know what? I feel that she's actually the voice of the voiceless in this regard. The Hardys assigned to WWE. And they can't really speak the way they want to speak. Like, Matt Hardy can't, you know, he can't rebuttal that. He can't, you know, chastise her back on social media. And I think that's where Rebby comes in. You know what I mean? Even with the broken gimmick and the arguments between GFW and the Hardys, you know, Matt Hardy is signed to another company, so it doesn't look well for him to be mentioning another brand. But the simple fact that Rebby is not signed to a company, she can be the mouthpiece for that. And I think that's where she's very instrumental. Like, she's bringing attention to it. She has her husband's back. And at the same time, it's drawing us to talk about it. Do you think she needs to do that, though? Can't Matt Hardy's a big enough name where he can just go backstage to whoever he needs to go backstage in the WWE Universe to and say, hey, I'm not down with what is being said about me and... You think the WWE is Here's gonna, the thing. Here's WWE the is going to take Matt Hardy over a seamstress? Here, the seamstress has <laughs> been there for over been 30 there for years. And this is not a first infraction. So it, it could it's be that. She, it could. You say, I, unless, it, it, unless she has some type of we don't know. blackmail information. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know what power she has. But, June, this is what we got to realize. Like, I'm sure there's she's, She put it on, like on social media. So there's a difference between going face-to-face but now it's on social media. Well, you got to so, ask why does she feel empowered enough that she can go on social media and say something like that? Because she's a seamstress and it's like, hey, I've been with you guys for 30 years. People love my costumes, et cetera, et cetera. Who knows? And, and, and if you know anything about Matt Hardy, you know Matt Hardy is one who has a lot of input into his costumes. A he, lot of input mm-hmm. into his costumes. He designed a lot of his earlier costumes that he and Jeff wore. A lot of a lot of the inwear uh, wear that they wear is a lot of wear that they design themselves. Mm-hmm. So I could see him getting into, and it sounds funny, an altercation about fabrics. <laughs> <laughs> I said, "God damn it! I want my <laughs> linens right." I said, "Neon green." <laughs> I'm going broken, Matt Hardy, because I didn't get no silk. So, so you, we don't know what what's going on behind the scenes between Matt Hardy and this seamstress to to cause this beef. But overall, I think just to really back in, you asked if is it necessary for Remy to get in. And I think it is. Once it touched social media, I think that's where Remy is the perfect voice because she's not signed to WWE. Right. She can be and their she voice. Said it, she pointed that out in her tweets. I don't have a job to lose here. So here's my two cents. Exactly. And you know she I mean? dished it out. And and to, to coin the term. And Matt's she's, lucky she, to have that. She's a ride or die. Right. She is, because you're talking about her man being dead. So I feel that. I understand. She's I understand a, that. If anyone said that about hey, your that's the significant other. Of her child. Right. Like you're I going said, too far. You could have said so. anything. But you don't say that. You don't want you don't wish death on anyone. Not on your own enemies. Nobody. So she's no. a ride or die, and that's ride why she is in the no pull out crew. File First under <laughs> ride or die. <laughs> Asterisk the rest is, is Jay Holland's oh, Jay. <laughs> opinion. Like, opinion. I, look. <laughs> Hashtag pull out crew. Um, <laughs> Next yes. order of business. Nope. <laughs> Neville. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> Neville. Apparently, 
supposedly it is rumored that he has walked out Crazy. of WWE. Crazy. Who needs Neville anyway? Crazy. Do you buy it or not? That? I absolutely buy it. I mean, I, it makes sense. I could see it. See, there's precedence for this. Neville's not the first person in the last year, year and a half to walk on the WWE. Of course, CM Punk walked out a yep. few years ago. Ryback walked out. Yeah. Cody Rhodes walked out. Yep. I don't know if Ryback walked out. Ryback walked out. Well, he kind of turned away. Ryback yeah, walked out. Ryback nah, walked out. I don't hear anyone chatting. We want more anymore. <laughs> like, I, I feel like I feel like if Ryback wanted to stay, he'd be there. But the, re- the ball reason- was in, the ball was in his court. The His reason contract was why through. these guys, and it's amazing to think that these guys, knowing that WWE is the only show in town on a national scale, on a big scale, on a main scale, to think that they could take the destiny in their own hands and walk out. There's precedent for it. Neville seeing guys like Cody Rhodes making it on the independent scene, make being able to make his own way, make his own schedule, and he's envious of that. Now, Neville knows WWE has no real, real long-term plan for somebody like him. Yeah, they came in as the king of the cruiserweights. But that's the part I don't get. But as soon as He's it so doesn't talented. work, somebody else comes in, swoops in, uh, and they move on to somebody else. And right. you're dead and you're dead Here's and you're my married. thing. Now, everyone questions like that. Not question, but everyone knows he's talented. Mm-hmm. Here's where the dilemma is. I think by WWE moving Enzo to 205 and putting him, the title on him, I don't think that was the last and, straw for no, Neville. no, no, no. I don't think Neville had an issue with it. With that, mm. I think it's the promos where he's saying he's making two hundred five live relevant, and then on top mm. of that, that'd be a little have, petty though if you no, took no, it that no, way. No, no, that'd no, be petty. no. Because if you think about I see it, it, as though, soon as two hundred five live kicked in, everyone was like, Neville needs to be there. Right. You get what I'm saying? And when you cut to the promos of Enzo and his heel promos, it's making it seem like he's making two hundred five live relevant. In the case, like, Enzo can say that just from the rating standpoint and where they are with their placement on Raw. But then to have him drop the title to Kalisto, it's like, I think that was the breaking point for Neville. He's just like... Well, the rumor is... Well, the rumor is he walked out before that. that. He walked out before that, and Vince mm-hmm. had to scatter in his plans, shuffle around, and come up with that. Okay, See, I don't even think drop it to Kalisto. I think no, Vince I, is a very spiteful motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Excuse my language, motherfucker. We're unsanctioned. Uh, Sam, everything's that's, on the table. That's Julio L. Jackson. So, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think he put the bell on Kalisto to show Neville, hey, I could change things just like that. Right. And if you don't want to play ball, I'll just put on somebody else and have somebody else play ball. Right. So I, I think it was a spiteful move by Vince because I, I do believe Neville walked out before then. I've also heard rumors that it had to do a lot with his pockets and the fact that his match was cut off the WrestleMania 33 uh, DVD that came out, which caused him not to get paid certain type of royalties. And that's causing him to take food out of his mouth and the mouth of his, his loved ones. So I can mm. see him not liking that and piling that on with the fact that, okay, now you are disrespecting me at my craft by telling me the work that I'm doing on 205 Live as the king of the cruiserweights is not good enough that we can have this guy in his promos shit on everything that I've just done for the past few months. Ladies and gentlemen, Julio June dug real deep there. Hey, hey. He went to the DVD portion. Like, honestly, I'm well, not even going to lie. I didn't even know it, that match was cut out. Cut it's, out no, it's, it's very relevant. Yeah, because, because that's a big reason as to why, allegedly, uh, Austin Aries walked out, where things like that. You got to think, mm. WrestleMania is what these guys work. And these for. guys put on one of the best matches on the card. This is one of the best matches on the card. In Absolutely, the week, WrestleMania. And, and for them to not get the royalties, get the hell out of here with that. So get out of here. I know you'd be tight. I know no, you'd be but tight. You know what it is? I don't think he had the issue with Neville. I mean, excuse me. The issue with Enzo. No, now you're just being biased because you love Enzo. No, you don't no, no, no. The realistically, no, because like no, realistically, we no, touched on the no, no, no. No, ladies and gentlemen, no. don't listen to these guys. No, hear me out. No, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've heard all our previous episodes. Yes, where he is milking well, the crap know, out of Enzo, and you can find yeah, that you can find those. The, ladies and gentlemen, you can find those episodes at www.fightboothpw.com. Fightbooth. Fightbooth. But uh, PW. But here's my thing. It's, it, it has nothing to do about a love of Enzo, like even though he's the real former champion. It has everything in the room. to do with your love no, of Enzo. No, but you have to look at that division. There and is no credible person that can rival Neville. 
Okay. Of that stature. Like, but th- but here's the thing. Enzo standing in the company backstage was not good. It was negative. It was perceived as negative, and people have been public about that. And I mean people who matter, people who have Look, direct hit, connections and interactions with this I guy. I think what's going but on. For him talks. to go to your division and strip you of your title when you've been busting your ass yeah, strip, in a position strip. that you never even wanted to be in. His, his, that, I'd rather lose that, that title to Enzo than fucking ha, ha. Ha, but that at least ha, 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 ha is working hard, man. No. Here's, here's the thing. Here's Enzo, the thing. Here's the thing. come on. He, we he know arrived with all like that heat. Enzo, guys like Neville, guys like Kaliso, even though they put the belt on these guys, they see it going as 205 Live as a demotion. Mm. It's not, Yes, that's right. They see it as For a demotion. For a lot of them, it was opportunity. And, it was their way in. And, but. and that's WWE's fault because yeah. these guys should have been on and 205 Live from the start. I'm going to build off that. Apparently... For the new WWE 2K18 game that came out, which I'm a huge fan of and I have it. I got it the first day it came out. The cruiserweight division is not getting a paycheck for that. That's pretty messy. And that's just a rumor. That's Those are things floating on the internet. Obviously, it's hard for us to get down to the well, bottom well, of that of question. Them, how many of them are in the game? They're, most of them are in there. Really? Most Tony of them are Jack Gallagher? Uh, TJP is well, definitely few, in there. He, yeah, he's in there. A few of them are going to be on the DLC as well. So eventually they'll so all be in the game. Cedric Alexander. Um, well, hey, hey, here's one thing. They're all one in thing there. I gotta say is, look at your contracts. If you're not negotiating in your contract that you should be getting that money, then hey, that's on you. So but if it's in your contract that you should be getting that money, and they're intentionally not giving you that money, like they are to Neville, they cut them out of the DVD. They cut them out of the but DVD. But to bring it back full circle, like I said, it's, and I know you guys think I'm like I, I, I love. Enzo, et cetera, et cetera. We think. He said we no, think. No, no, no. Like, like, uh, honestly, we, we this, is, this is candid know. talk. This I'm going to play talk, you back like, something from previous episodes. But this is candid talk. Like, we love Enzo. We no, love no, no. This is candid talk. Like, you're, in, you're in Enzo's no pull-out club. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> no, that's where. That's how deep it is. I'm not even, nah, that, that's that, how deep that's it is, Jerry. Ladies and gentlemen, if you hear some, some thumping or, or over here, that means I'm fucking Louis up right now for suggesting that. Oh, that man. Just that thought alone makes me S A W F T saw. Oh, man. <laughs> but no, but re- let's really back here real quick, gentlemen. Um, let, let's be real. 205 Live, the, we was interested in the Enzo Neville storyline. Were we not? We were. Yeah. Okay. It was the most interesting thing on 205 Live. It, my point exactly. My point exactly. Because they were so they shooting. Built, no, and I think just by them throwing the title on Kalisto, so like everyone thinks Neville left out beforehand. I think Neville knew the plans moving forward. And, and which, okay. you know, I mean, it's not, it's not uncommon for superstars to know the, the direction of that character, their character. Moving forward, I think he found out. He realized what was happening. It was just like, you know what? This is the last straw. Fuck that. I'm out of here. I see Austin Aries making a lot fresh on the independent scene. Bang. I can do that as well. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, and I respect his move for that. Um, you know what I mean? But Neville's not the only one who supposedly uh, is walking out. Oh, say it ain't so. Nia now, Jax. now, Julio. Say it ain't so. Nia Jax is a part of Julio's no pull out crew. No, she, oh, 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 I don't snap. have a crew like that. I know you see me. <laughs> I don't have one of those crews. I will say it over these airways right now. I don't have a crew like that. I don't, I don't have a crew like that either. <laughs> I don't have a crew. Let, like, Julio, I mean, let's get him to clear. I, I have a crew of appreciation. Julio, let's get him to clear. Pre- you and me. I, let's get it clear. No, no group like that. Nope, me neither. Yeah, uh, but yeah, yeah, hold on. on the Nia Jax factor. We are unsafe. That's Jay's I'm, I'm, club. I, I'm hoping I'm hoping the rumors aren't true, only because she's a unique talent and she's 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 unlike anything else WWE has. Um, so to hear that she too may be thinking of walking out because of frustrations. And I, honestly, can she? What? What? Why is she frustrated? Well, uh, you gotta pay your dues. You gotta pay your dues. I mean, really? she, you gotta pay your dues. I'm sorry. I think she was there before Alexa Bliss. She definitely was there before Alexa Bliss. Was she there before Alexa Bliss? Yes, she was. What, uh, Alexa Bliss, I remember on being the main on NXT roster. way before Nia Jax. But on who was TV. on the main roster first? I think it was the same time. Mm-mm. Alexa Bliss wasn't she drafted in the Superstar draft? Mm, one of the one of the late rounds. One of the uh, hey, yo, listen. They went to they went <laughs> to the, the main roster at the same time. One of the and, rounds. And that I'm you don't sorry. See on I'm TV. sorry. I'm sorry. Alexa Bliss was when she got drafted in Afterthought, but she went and put on quality matches. She tried different gimmicks. She put quality promos together, and she made herself into something you want to watch. I think not Alexa to say Nia Jackson didn't no do that, crew. but. You got to you got to pay your dues. You got to pay your dues. And I feel like she was about to, to be on the cuffs of something special. Here's my thing. 
not if we look at the women's division as a whole, right? Realistically, not even just storyline. Do we think anyone in real life can beat up Nia Jax? No, no, not at all. Nope. She should be Goldberg, Brock Lesnar. Yes. She should be Goldberg. And this is the words of Julio Jones. She should be Goldberg, Brock Lesnar. I endorse that. The fact that she hasn't even had a WWE Women's Raw championship match in a one-on-one setting. It's always a yeah, fatal four-way, four to five But is way. that because she can't put on a quality match? But she can. She, she, she can she's a, she can? She can. And she that's can. the thing, like. You know what you get with Nia Jax. You're going to get the powerhouse. She, yeah, she doesn't need to have long matches. But it's not even that. You know you're going to get the powerhouse. You know you're going right. to get the Samoan, you know, Samoan drop from her. You know you're going to get the leg drop, which is a finisher. You know you're going to get the running splash in the corner from her. Like, you know it's a power move set where why not build her up as a monster? But they tried that, if you remember. She was on the same trajectory at the same time as Braun Strowman having squash mm-hmm. matches Having on squash Raw matches with local same talent. Time. Yes. But at the same time. That's but true. But what did they Why? do with Braun? Did he win the title? No. But he's a, he's a superstar who, without look, the title, look, doesn't look, need look, the strap. Look, he's no, been on the main event no, scene. No, because her? When, you look at, when you look at Braun... And this is what we're gonna get into it with the with the whole match between I mean Brock and Braun real quick. They made that match alone. I felt hurt Braun more because Why? How, how, how many how many finishes how many running power slams did Brock take and kick out? I want to mm. say like a good three, correct? A few, a few, and then you know F five boom done <laughs> out of nowhere. Yes, that's Brock. You want to say one F five? I didn't like that. One F five. It's Brock Lesnar. Compared to a, a but it was a, too a sudden. Monster. That's Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns kicked out of how many F fives? I mean, but come on, yeah, Roman Brock Re- Lesnar, Roman Reigns, Roman, they, Roman, they Roman Reigns. Beat. I'll give you that, Jay. They messed up. I'm sorry, they did. I'm so- listen. They Roman, messed up. Roman Reigns Julio beat the Undertaker. Up. Yeah, okay, and the possibly Undertaker. retired the Undertaker. Yeah, really? so for him, and, and to- then they had Braun with one running power slam beat Roman. Mm-hmm. It was the if you watch the match, it's what built up. It's, it's, I love it. It's what built up to the F five. It's what built up to the mm. running power slam. Right. Braun what built through? A, Ron went Braun through a barricade. Dominated. Braun mm-hmm. dominated. Dominated that. There's match. a lot. There's a lot in Brock Lesnar matches, especially they try to bring an MMA UFC element to it. The fact that it could finish so quickly. Yeah, they, they always like that. do that. They Let like me know when you've seen the F five in an MMA match. <laughs> no, um, it's just the element of the match can end quickly from one move. All right, the next order of business is supposedly the re- the return of Kane was kept under wraps for months, including the night of going to the arena, arriving at the airport. All of that was kept under wraps. He supposedly arrived at a, at a completely different airport and was hidden. From everyone else. Kane is back. Why is he back? And how do you feel about it? He must not be doing well in his mayoral campaign. You know what? <laughs> if anything, that got him votes. First of all. Beating up Roman Reigns. First of all. Got him Is, is it still going on? Is the mayoral campaign still yeah. going on? Yeah, it's still going on. <laughs> it is? So no one, is, no one expected that Trump and a dead body didn't help him. Really? <laughs> so the fa- kudos to WWE for, for, for doing that. And it fits for storyline reasons. I'll tell you why. Mm-hmm. Kane is the brother of who? You already know. Undertaker. He's the brother of the Undertaker. Undertaker. Who retired the Undertaker to become the big dog in the yard? Roman freaking Reigns. Roman Reigns. Mm, I'm not giving WWE that credit for the title. Oh, absolutely. Real? That's the credit. Oh, come on. Absolutely. Oh, that's going to play out in the course of Jay. the next couple of weeks. I'm There's not. a reason why Kane is teaming up with The Miz, right. The Bar, and Braun Strowman. And of all people it's to because attack. Roman Reigns is on the other side. Right. I think that would be better suited for a one-on-one. No, because you don't want to see wow. Kane on a Jay, one-on-one I, match. I Look at Kane's one-on-one matches in the last think. few years. I don't. I, Who, no, no, horrible. not corporate Kane. Kane. Kane's matches. He listen. He's not doing it anymore. Who is, who is he going against? I, I honestly think what they're going to do is Brothers of Destruction, 2017 really? with Braun Strowman. Really? If you looked at the end of Raw. There was the two of them standing in the ring together, side by side. Julia, can, can right. I ask you a question? Who's your, who's your bud, man? Because obviously he has, oh, some, wow. he has some good stuff if you're thinking that, man. Who's, who's your bud, listen, man? Listen, it was here on the Unsanctioned Podcast first that you heard Sami Zayn was going to turn heel. And unfortunately, he turned heel. True. I'm telling you right now. I'll give you that. Mark it down. Yes, sir. And Brothers it was also, of Destruction. Yes, sir. 2.0. Yep. Braun Strowman. 
Kane yes. out there dominating. Mm-hmm. Dominating. You know what? You know what? And, and to He's give right. you credit, you were. But it's also on the same podcast that Ooh. you heard the United States Championship match was going to be a triple threat match. Kind of true. Kind of? Not true. You're right. Listen, we're talking, <laughs> we're talking, about, we're talking about something on a card. Compared to storyline long-term events. <laughs> what I said carries more weight. You know what, Julio? I agree. Kane is back to avenge Kane is the back retirement, avenge the, the retirement loss of his the brother. Undertaker. Yep, the Undertaker. The womp Shield womp. finally unites. The Shield is back together. Why now? And does it matter? It always matters. Mm-hmm. No, it doesn't matter. It always matters. These, these are matter. the top Ooh. three guys. Ooh. Come on. Come on. Ooh. These are the Too top three guys in the WWE. Thoughts. It always matters. Hold on, before we get into this. Okay. Luis, let's hear your thoughts on this. My thought is it feels kind of soon. It is inevitable. They did mm. need to come back together eventually. And the fact that they're all young, they're on the younger side, and, mm-hmm. you know, it's almost a guarantee that that was going to happen. But I'm the most happy for Dean Ambrose. He genuinely looks like he is in his happy place. <laughs> he looks like he's where he belongs. He, look, he doesn't look lost anymore. He looks happy to be filling this role. He missed mm-hmm. it. You can tell. It, this is the Dean that I'd like to see. He's happy to be there. He's excited. He's amped. He's so into it. And that ultimately is going to be who it serves best. But in terms of the actual overall reunion. Hold on, Luis. Before you get it's to It's a that, little soon. Before you get to that. Mm-hmm. Because the way WWE is making a team yep. is that Dean's mouth is getting them into more problems. He's a lunatic French. Yeah, but it's like Yeah, but did you see what Roman was saying to Kurt Angle? I'm gonna whoop your ass. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no, if you if you if you think about what Dean's been saying, we'll take on four or five different guys and what's been happening. They've added match person number four, match person number five. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of me kind of. So his mouth me is think, getting them in trouble? Yeah, it's kinda making me think that they're gonna turn on they're him. They're going like he's going to eventually make their hill turn and that they they're going to be sick of him. You get what I'm saying? If that makes any yeah, sense. Yeah, you're thinking ahead. We're talking about the, them this uniting. This is unsanctioned, bro. <laughs> you're thinking unsan- ahead. This is unsanctioned, bro. I think them uniting was too soon. But in terms of what you're talking about, if I can jump into your ballpark real quick, I see Roman Reigns eventually turning on them. I agree. Like, I didn't need you guys to begin with. Mm. I, I did this more as a favor. I mm. agree. I didn't need to join you guys. I, I was agree. good chasing champions. I see. I see. I honestly think this might be like a one-time thing. It, it might is be. a one-time. I can it see that be being a one-time, one-time thing. thing. Or or I can see it carrying to the Survivor Series, the Shield, fighting these five guys, and not the three of them can't be five guys, and they need to find one a more person. A couple dream matches on Twitter floating around is New Day versus the Shield. Stop. I don't what see. dream match is that? I've seen it I mean, they, they teased it. They it teased today. it a couple months ago. Bro. Mm-hmm. With, with the, the New Day, the it Shield, and match. the Glover. Whoever has Make that, that clear. as a dream match needs to freaking... Kill themselves. Mm-hmm. Dream match, I don't know, but <laughs> I, I can see <laughs> no. something playing Jay out Hall in Survivor everybody. Series where Asterisk. the Shield is fighting these five guys. What? And they need to have a mystery partner. The fact that the New Day, like, no, New Day versus Shield, like, I'd rather have, honestly, and I'm a go- I'm going to call them by the name that WWE is trying to force down everyone's throat. The <laughs> the Good Brothers <laughs> with AJ yeah, Styles. Not I'd rather see the club. Rest of shield, and that's just real, real talk. No, I, I don't think that's more of a dream match. Just going back to what True. we said about the shield reuniting too early. I don't know how long ago that they broke up. Was it 2013, 2014? So even looking back at that, that's three or four years ago. Nowadays, in this Twitter universe, in this social media led universe, that's ages ago. That's so, forever ago. So, so three years might not be that long for them to reunite. And all of us are the like the combination of old school and new school in terms of our generation. Right. And so, to me, it feels like it was yesterday. They were still. It together. does feel like, like it was yesterday. Why is everyone so yeah, it's too soon? And it, it, I remember yeah. talking about it. It's, I don't it's think too it's too soon. soon. I think I think I think you had to do it. I, mm. I, the way it came together, I don't know about the way it came together, but I think you had to do it sometime relatively soon because otherwise it becomes like when Shawn Michaels and Triple H reunited together and it became a dried up, no. watered down version yeah. of what and it used th- to be. And that's what I argue with that. And the reason why you may think that is dried down. You're dried talking about DX? When tri- yes. Oh, come on, Jay. When they first, no, Here you go. When they right. first came back Here together, you, go. you had to factor in. No, Julio, you, had to factor you are 100% in correct, Julio. No. 
You have to dried factor up. in the It was elements. not authentic. That was not DX. That was Are you serious? Not DX. Do you guys yo, remember yo, the angle? Yo, they made a logo for their spray paint. That's not DX. That's not Come listen, on, listen, man. Well, we're not talking about any promotional they, selling but that's items. where they we're lost We're talking me. about when that's, they first came back together. It takes that little to lose me on that. Bro, one because week later, The Shield had t-shirts. So? Are you serious? That's okay. They're marketing. No. They're selling it's, stuff. That's DX. Marketing. That was the okay. biggest thing. Why not bring his, back his the old, thing, no, no. Not the old the DX shirts? Like, the me, gimmick didn't fit the guys anymore. They were right. older. They're old. They were 40 yeah. years old. And Doing the comedy. Everything was so corporate. stuff wasn't. Yeah. And you still laugh. They were trying too hard. I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. I promise Fucking people from the sky because that was stupid. You didn't laugh at Shawn Michaels going down the hallway super kicking random people? That was the only funny thing The only funny thing they did. Like, that, that's my thing. Like, I felt with the DX thing that was great for the simple fact that it came together off the Spirit Squad and Vince McMahon. It was like Vince, like, hey, Triple H, you don't have it. Hey, Shawn Michaels, you know what? F you type of thing. And it forced them back together. You get what I'm saying? I don't think it was like the Shield where it's just like the Shield had one week. And the only thing that they had in common was a common opponent. Mm hmm. Like, I'm gonna, I felt it was forced down our throat. Here's what I'm going to say. You're wrong. You said Spirit Squad automatically. That's going to be wrong. <laughs> Anything involved in the Spirit Squad is yes. wrong. Spirit thing. Squad 2017. Eh. <laughs> Spirit Squad back then when DX reunited. Spirit Squad actually had some some pullback. Then. Not, not on my Spirit TV. Squad. Not on my TV. <laughs> right. You guys watched. So I don't want to hear it. Next my, order of business. Squad. Jay, we're going to jump into your world. Ring of Honor. Cody Whoa. says he's the biggest draw in wrestling. All of wrestling. Cody is the biggest draw. This is what he claims. I'm and smirking. this ignited a little uh, back and forth, a little, little, little slight beef with Roman Reigns, the man who we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. So, Jay, I'd love to start with you. Yes. Do you agree with your man, Cody Rhodes? Is he the biggest draw in wrestling? That's a strong <sighs> statement. Here's my thing. Mm-hmm. Love Roman Reigns. Okay. Okay. Love Cody. But Thank Cody you. is partially right in this scenario. Oh, come on. And the reason why man. I say he's part oh, listen I get to so me. frustrated with you. Listen. Oh, the reason why he's gosh. partially right right now Jeez. is who is po Cody a part of? Bullet Club. Bullet Club. The hottest faction for the past. Three years, three plus years going around. Now, if you want to ask me, Jay, who's the biggest draw in all of wrestling, I'm going to say Kenny Omega, without a doubt. So, okay, okay, you just said so Cody's wrong. No, I said Cody was partially right. <laughs> there can only be one biggest you draw. Both, in you both are wrong. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Here's my thing. Oh, I said more hot people. Take now, over now, there. We're, we're gonna jump. We're gonna dive right into okay. it. Okay. Cody stateside. Cody stateside. We're talking more about Cody Rhodes now than we ever have been, and we're talking yes. more about Cody Rhodes. I, but now. I don't think that was too hard for no, him no, to no, do. No, 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 no. We're talking more about because Cody. WWE limited him. We're talking about you. You proving my point. Okay. But we're talking more about Cody Rhodes now, mm -hmm. and he's doing more now, now that he's independent. More that we're even talking about WWE superstars to a, a degree. Now, in all of wrestling, we all know it's Kenny Omega. Like, and, and Kenny brings that certain nostalgia to him. But Again, overall, wrong. but overall, well, not wrong. But overall, <laughs> Cody Rhodes, I, f I feel his promo. And I, I get it. It's a promo. You want to have people talking. About you the drug test and the, and the you best. Wanna, you, I, I get it. Like, John Cena did it. Why can't Cody do it? <laughs> okay. And especially the, the simple fact that WWE is pulling from Cody's father's ideas with Starcade and War Games, which is a Dusty Rhodes idea, and Cody can't even use the last name Rhodes. Like I get, Cody is the guy that we're talking about. The fact that this is even a topic alone is just helping prove Cody's point. But it's not so much him that's a topic; it's the claim, guys. First of all, Julio, I gotta hear this. You said all, we're both first wrong. Of all, so what's first your take? Of all, Give the me your biggest strong professional wrestling is Brock Lesnar. Okay. Period. I agree with that. Today, I could agree and with tomorrow, that. Tomorrow, he is the biggest draw professional. Okay, now no, the hell back he's to not. this topic. Yeah, I could no, agree with that. Back to yeah. the top. Rock That's is why he's still around for all that money. Listen, Kenny Omega can. It might be the best worker in professional wrestling. It mm. might put on the best matches in professional wrestling. Hot but take. the biggest draw and the person that 
eyes and casual fans and media wants to see when he's on the card. It's Brock media Lesnar. wants it. Julio June is and Kenny I'm Omega on ESPN. Full, I'm using your no, full government. I don't see name. Kenny Omega on Sports Center. Me Julio June. Are you serious? He right might be now? on local access TV in I don't, Japan. I don't. But I don't. Brock Lesnar was in the UFC. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, the UFC yeah. champion. Uh, uh, this, incredible, this is incredible a perfect fighter. time. This is a perfect time right now. And I may even create a post on the Unsanctioned Podcast on Twitter, which you can follow us at Unsanctioned PW. Maybe on fightboothpw.com. No, no. We're, we're going to bring this to Twitter. Kenny Omega behind Okada like, is the biggest superstar in the world right now. You are bugging. Oh my goodness. Me, this I person's a bigger superstar than Brock Lesnar. Bro- Period. Brock, Brock Lesnar. Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Oh my God. Outside of the WWE, doesn't even need. He's bigger than professional wrestling. Are you being? Is he not? Are I, you being I'm super serious right now? Serious. He's bigger than professional. People wrestling. know Brock Lesnar from what before? Uh, uh, freaking UFC. You know what? But wrestling. there are people who know him from outside of that because of the UFC. There's nobody that knows Kenny Omega. From anything else, but being if you're a if you're wrestler. if you're a wrestling fan, not, I'm not even gonna say that hard. If you're just a wrestling fan, Listen, you know again, Kenny Omega. Again, again you know he, the cleaner. He has great matches. You as uh, you might want to see his matches more, but as the biggest draw is Brock Lesnar. Now going back to this point, oh, goodness, of course Roman Reigns is gonna come <laughs> I think up and Julio's defend. Julio's getting paid. Of course Roman oh. Reigns is gonna <laughs> defend. Cody Rhodes saying he's the biggest draw in wrestling, not because Roman Reigns thinks he's a bigger draw. Mm-hmm. But because Cody Rhodes is not in the WWE, Roman Reigns is the WWE his voice now. He is when he says he's the big dog, he's the one in the yard. What he means is, is that the people's choice. No, I'm not saying it's the people's choice. No, but what I, he's I buy saying into is, it. I buy into what it. What he's saying is, I'm the guy who's gonna stand up and call people out when they're wrong yeah. on behalf of WWE. You already mm. saw it. He's kicking people off of buses. <laughs> right. He has this beef mm. with Cody Rhodes. He is the guy that is going to stand up and hold the WWE banner. So, I'm also the guy that's going to get suspended for not passing my drug and, test. And you know what? Hey, everybody makes mistakes. You live and you learn. Julio, you do you see you Cody Rhodes making his way back to WWE eventually? Absolutely. Okay. J- Jay, do you see that? Eventually. Okay. But where Cody so, just So signed, he's not doing himself no. any... No, he's not doing himself a disservice. In fact, he's okay. doing himself even more. Here, here's my okay. thing. Because Cody, Cody recently signed uh, you know, what I mean, an exclusive contract with... Ring of Honor slash New Paper. Japan for a couple of years. So we're not going to see Cody in WWE for a couple Please. of years. We're not. Please. We're not. <laughs> Please. WWE will find a way if they want Cody Rhodes to get Cody Rhodes no matter who they tried. the contract to. They're trying to bring him in for Starcade. Please. Like let, the, number, the number wasn't high enough. Let's be honest. Please. No, if the number's high enough, a if the number's money, high so enough I don't blame they him. can get him. I mean, we've heard in previous interviews with former guests like, "Hey, we were offered contracts and we turned it down." So the, it's not the number. Yeah. Hey, we you all say it. We like, all say Sting. It. Everyone well, has a we price. We didn't ask him how much that number was. We didn't yeah. ask him. Okay, That's so true. what took long? What took so long for Sting? Sting had the number. Because Sting had money already. Sting Sting That's chilling. the thing. Sting was like, "How are they going to use me?" But he already had money. He Sting, had that Sting leisure. Sting had more to worry about. Right. I love Sting. I'm a money. big Sting fan. It, it was the but he already had money. Point. He's good. So it's he can legacy. worry about exactly. his so, yeah. so my He doesn't thing have to worry is, about putting food on the table. Right. So here's my thing. Cody Goldberg, when Cody he held Rhodes out. Is, Cody Rhodes is not worried about money. He can live off his father. Right. Absolutely. And, and I don't want to sit there and make it seem like he's just smooching. No, right. Like, no, we get it. Dusty's innovations into wrestling itself. Cody Rhodes, if he... They're all good. Chose not to wrestle again. He'd be good. He's good. Yeah. Good. yeah. So the fact that you said it's the number, it has nothing to do with the number. I said no, it's no, a number no, not no, big no. enough for That's him a separate to be point. interested. That's a separate point. Mm. That's a separate point. Exactly. Right. Next order of business, because we still have to get to the TLC match card. Shawn Michaels just so happens to be announced as the special guest referee at the special NXT event happening on the same night as Ring of Honor. In the same city. What are your thoughts on that? WWE is afraid. Really? They're afraid. That's the word of, on the street. Ring of Honor is growing. Like, yeah, big time. L- 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 let's just I be love it. factual here. Yep. The biggest faction in all of wrestling is on the independent scene. It's the Bullet Club. The biggest tag team in all of wrestling is the Young Bucks. You know what I mean? The most talked about heavyweight champion, and I know Julio June's going to say Brock Lesnar. No, is, he's just no. the biggest draw. It's, it's different. It's, it's, yeah. No. Right. It's Cody Rhodes. 
And when you, and the biggest Wait, wrestling right. personality right now, if you think about it, it's a toss up. But I'll, I want to say, if you give five names, a good three of them is in Ring of Honor. You're going to mention Cody. You're going to mention Marty Skrull, the villain. And nine times out of ten, you're going to mention Kenny Omega himself. WWE doesn't like that. It's kind of hurting their product. And the fact that Ring of Honor is partnering with New Japan and they're doing more U.S. shows, it's not a good look for WWE. The fact that we can say WWE is scared. That's crazy. Ring of Honor is crazy. Because... WWE's third brand, we're talking about their third brand competing with Ring of Honor. We're not talking about Raw or SmackDown having a pay-per-view where they need to put somebody yeah. in to draw names. We're talking about NXT. So I don't think WWE is scared of Ring of Honor. What I do think WWE is scared of is the casual fan not wanting to watch NXT. Mm-hmm. I don't think the casual fan is going to watch Ring of Honor or NXT He's going to choose to watch nothing. But I think WWE, with the fact that they're bringing back this war game stipulation, they're not going to want to just use it once. They're going to want to put it on, have people see it, see that it's amazing. So they need something to draw eyes to it. And that that the thing to draw eyes to is a big name, and the big name is Shawn Michaels. And they're in San Antonio, so you might as well. You right. knew somebody was going to come. You, they're in Texas, so you know they're going to have some type of Shawn Michaels or Stone Cold come back. They always do it. Right. But I don't think they're scared of Ring of Honor. You know what's crazy what's gonna like kinda ruin it for me and it already does. It might sound crazy, it might sound whack, but Adam Cole definitely looks like Shawn Michaels' son. He does. He looks like he a does. clone of a young Shawn Michaels. They look this, these these dudes are identical. Shawn Michaels and Adam Cole, Jay. These guys are identical. And so having them both be in the square circle at the same time, it's just going to be more like more laughter for me, you know, more comedic for me. I'm not going to take it's it It's comedic, serious. but and, and, you it's also like, gotta, yo, you look at these dudes, look at father and son. I'm just going to be clowning the I whole mean, time. And, and to think of that match, that's an amazing match. You got Sandy. Oh, it's freaking Eric, amazing. Eric Young's a great worker. But I don't want Adam, that, that stupid reason to take away from it for me, especially knowing how... Like, Shawn Michaels can do anything for them. He's backstage all the time. They're just like, hey, put on this ref shirt. Yeah, he's coaching down there. But like, right. you, you have to look at it this way. WWE is notoriously from wanting to create and own their own product. When you look at certain entities, like Eric Young, you know, he became, to the point, big in TNA, former champion over there, that WWE knew that they couldn't bring him in and just switch his name. When you look at the Undisputed Era altogether, may I add all former Ring of Honor slash New Japan guys, they're, they've are they eclipsed to the point where people knew their saying. Adam Cole, in, specifically, they knew his saying before he was even introduced. Like, you can't, like, and, and that just dates me back to, like, how strong the indies are coming. And WWE, whether we want to believe it because they're they're conglomerate, they're mega, they're moguls, that we may want to feel that they're not intimidated. I think that the fact that people are making rumblings and people are starting to know who these characters are, these people are and knowing their sayings before they even touch down on WWE, I think WWE's like, hey, you know what? We need to pay attention to this more than what we're usually used to doing. And I did, and that's why I get from the point of being WWE being scared that. Well, that's why I loved back in the late '90s when WCW was at their door, forcing them to be on their toes. Let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope. I love this get a Ring of Honor because I hope so. The product better. Exactly. I don't think it is. I hate when they get comfortable, and that's why I hated all that like between, I want to say like '05 and 2011, 12 ish. I, I hated all that. But I you, tuned out big time. I mean, I mean, no one was pushing them. I mean, I mean, there is a point to people knowing these guys, they're in their names before they come in because it's been a while since WWE's changed their name. I think they learned from, you know, when Kevin Owens and 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 uh, Finn Balor and Apollo Crews and those guys came in and they gave them name changes. Fans weren't with that. Fans identified with their old names. I don't know about the Apollo Crews, but people are more comfortable saying Xavier Woods. <laughs> no, I think no Apollo Crews, Uha Nation. Oh, 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 Apollo yeah, yeah, Crews. Yeah, yeah. I, I was right. thinking you got, about you see, truth see, and consequences. See, you're, like, you're taking, you're taking, you're taking Luis's mantle and got New Day on the mind. 
<laughs> think about you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. And to, and to get it out there. I'm not a huge New Day fan. Yeah. Huge. No. Lies. Huge. huge. Lies. I'm not for real. Big He's an extremely fan. huge New Day fan. <laughs> All right, before we jump into the TLC card, Sting, we might finally have an answer to this as to why we've never seen Sting take on Undertaker. Sting says that the Undertaker, in a conversation between the two of them, didn't show much interest in a match between the two. He said, I mentioned it to him. I ran it by him saying it'd be cool to one day do it. I'm up for it. And he didn't really answer with the same kind of sentiment. And that's where it all just kind of died. Did Sting say what year this conversation took place? <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't think he said what year it was, but he said this was definitely a conversation from... Can we say the source if where this conversation any, was? If it's, if it's no, no, happened, he said, no, no, it's, 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 it's If it's there. happened any time yep, within he really the last said 10 this. years, I, I have a reason why Undertaker said that. Because Undertaker... Or didn't say anything. Why he, why he didn't say anything. And Sting was just like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> Undertaker likes putting on matches. He He's only back four times a year, max. And he likes putting on matches that are memorable with guys who are going to put on memorable matches. But that's Sting. Whether you think it's Sting or not, you're going to make money. Uh, Are you alluring to that a Sting Undertaker match will not be memorable? The match itself. It's going to be, whether good or bad, it's going to be memorable. They faced off finally. It's not going to be the quality of match. Oh, my goodness. But there's money to be made. Julio, did you just say that? Did you just about money? Did you just really say that? When Sting put on a great match in the last 10 years? Are you free? When was the when last he time he came back? It was great. What? No, it wasn't. It was, it was great because you wanted to. Fans see were thing. chanting, "You still the, got it." No, when he it. faced Seth Rollins before he went down, yeah, but it was, listen, they <laughs> had to Seth say, Rollins ended his career. That stuff against Triple H at Sting, WrestleMania, Sting, he should have won. That he should have won because yeah. Sting was better than Triple H. Yes, <laughs> but he should have won because he's a better worker in the ring. Sting at that and moment. TNA had some memorable matches. Like, Absolutely, especially as the Joker. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. minus the the Jeff Hardy debacle. Oh yeah, he took care of business. No, he didn't. No, no. He, no, he, he didn't. Yeah, no, actually, he didn't. actually, Jeff he was high. Yeah, no, he <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> Sting had great matches with guys like Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles. Guys who guys can carry who him? who else can carry him? Oh, man. All in TNA. Right. Claim. But still, guys he had, he had a great match. He was a part of you it. You can't have two guys looking for other people to carry them having a match. Really? Together. So the first Brock Lesnar Goldberg we thought was going to be awesome, and then what happened? It was pretty awesome. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, ended in a minute and 30 seconds. That was awesome. Yeah, we need to really know awesome. who you're connected to. It's the Julio surprise Julio. factor. I'm Wait, with did Julio. you want to see those guys go 30 minutes? No. Hell no, because we tried that. Why would I want to see those guys and go 30 minutes? We tried that and they those failed miserably. Our hard hitters. That's why I said the very first Brock Lesnar Goldberg right. match. They failed. was horrible. They failed. Yeah, because that's they didn't what, know what to do with said. all that time. They were just trying to fill it with tough guy it's, it was horrible. and stuff. No. You don't want to see them You don't want to see them flipping and diving. You want to see them banging. Hard hits, in and out. Boom, we don't want to see guys three. banging, period. No, <laughs> nah, but the... Oh, damn, Jay. Jay's been a little uh, raunchy guys. lately. I don't know what's We're going on. We're going unsanctioned. <laughs> nah, but... Uh, nah, you going unsanctioned. <laughs> Here's more unsanctioned than <laughs> usual. <laughs> Here's my thing about the Sting Undertaker match. Okay. Last I, stop before I, we get to CLC. I, I think Undertaker looked at it and was like, hey, if Sting versus me, he needs to have a win on WWE TV. Prior to me or immediately after me. He can't just have a one off with me. And I think Undertaker realized that. Undertaker, you know, know, he was in WCW as well. He understands how big Sting is. Sting, if not surpasses Undertaker, is on the same level. And to me, he Sting edges Undertaker just a bit. Wow. That's a big claim. That's a big claim. Uh, It's a big claim, but when you look at Sting's career, you know, you look at the grades he went over. Ric Flair wanted to willingly put Sting over. Sting beat Ric Flair. He's beat Hogan. He's beat every big name in the business. Undertaker's also beat these guys. I don't think Undertaker versus Ric Flair. Undertaker beat Ric Flair at WrestleMania. Yes, he did. (laughs) 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 But I'm saying, like, it's it's latter-day Ric Flair. It's not prime Ric Flair. It's not prime Ric Flair. I agree with you, but... He still look uh, good to though. To say Sting is, I, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's like comparing two greats. Um, in, I, I don't think you can. Like, and when you think of Sting, he NWO. Sting was the one guy who combated the NWO, and like, yeah, single handedly, yeah, and pushed him to a whole nother level. Like, Sting edges out to me. He edges out the Undertaker very, very closely, but he edges him out just for the simple fact that he was the franchise of WCW. Undertaker slash is definitely the franchise of WWE. Yes, but then you, when you look at it, can you honestly say he's the biggest superstar of all time? No. You have Hogan. You have Rock. Are, are you saying, so you have saying, are you saying Sting's the biggest WCW superstar of all time? By mm. far he is. Ever? Bigger than Number Ric one. Flair. Number one. Biggest. 
Then Ric Flair. Number Biggest. One. Then Ric Flair. Biggest. Wow. Oh, wow. Jesus. Wow. Are you serious? Ric Flair is more NWA. Then WCW. Oh come on. NWA is WCW. No, it's not because oh, also if you want to compare that, it's one in the same. It's one in the same. If you want to compare that, like it's one in the same. ECW the was same. a part of NWA. It's one in the bit. same. And and WWE is the surviving company, and the Undertaker arguably is the WWE's biggest creation in the last twenty five years. So true. Yes, sir. Are we really saying that Undertaker is the biggest creation? Oh, no, in man. the last twenty five years, he absolutely is the WWE's biggest. Are creation. you? Oh, last twenty five years, I guess because the Hulk Hogan wasn't created in the past twenty five years. That's why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said that. And, I mean, but realistically, WWE's biggest creation. Like, no, but Undertaker, actually, Hogan wasn't created in the, in the last twenty five years. It was that's, before that. that. That's what I'm saying. But he is right. WWE's biggest creation. WWE's biggest creation. Hogan. Is WrestleMania. Who, oh, made, oh. who made WrestleMania relevant? Vince McMahon. Vince. <sighs> who made WrestleMania relevant? Vince, Vince. Oh, are you trying to say Hogan? Well, if we're really talking about Mr. T made the first WrestleMania relevant and who Get brought him. Mr. T in was Vince McMahon. Well, if the you want to be relevant, if, if you want to be relevant, it is the, it the, the POTUS who made WrestleMania relevant because who? he gave him that prime location at <laughs> Trump Tower. I mean, that was WrestleMania 4 and 5. Though, still no, no, no. First, one first, one first one. Yeah, yeah. WrestleMania 1 and 2 were Madison That's Square Garden. your POTUS. Mm. That ain't my, my POTUS. That's <laughs> my POTUS. <laughs> All right, guys, let's jump into this TLC match card briefly, run down it, hopefully in about 10, 15 minutes, so that everyone can stick with us and hear how correct I am. Let's start with the kickoff <laughs> how correct you on are. the TLC okay. pre-show. Sasha Banks versus Alicia Fox. Let me start out by saying, oh, Sasha, how the mighty have fallen. And I don't blame her. It's nothing to do with her fault. I don't know what's going on. She deserves better than this. Induction number three to the pullout team. Pullout crew. Um, <laughs> you going to be seeing everything no, up? No, you know what it is. What Honestly, is it? Honestly, I'm pissed at WWE for doing this. For the Ali- Alicia Banks stuff? Uh, Alicia Fox stuff? Luis, you got jokes. No, the hmm. fact that Sasha, who I hate arguably, Alicia's not even it. arguably, who is your biggest face of that women's division, is on a she's relegated to a TLC kickoff match, like and and you know and rumors have it is like initially it was supposed to be Nia Jax for Sasha at TLC, but the simple fact that you know we know Oscar's debuting, but the simple fact that you have Sasha in your kickoff match, why not have Sasha versus Oscar? I know no, that's a money because match down Emma, the line, Emma is there to take the pinfall because Oscar needs to look dominant, and I think that's why. I think, I think, I think, and you can't I, have that be Sasha. I, I think this is a long term play. I think what Emma play, and Oscar? No, there's Sasha Banks being on the TLC kickoff. Oh, I think it's playing what do you into mean? they got what WWE is going to do is the fact that she's in the kickoff match is going to work into her heel turn. Okay, she's going to say. I'm on kickoff matches. Right. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. <laughs> yeah. I should be the woman's champion. Julio, I hope so. I hope so. And, and I, 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 don't, I don't think. And, and it's long overdue. We all know when it's a kickoff match, we're either going to see one of three things. We're either going to see a woman's match, <laughs> cruiserweights, or a tag team match. Wait a minute. No, Somebody's no, got to be there. Not just a tag team. It's just, it's just, the hype, bros. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 just, it's, just, it's just the woman's, cycle, women's division cycle to be on the kickoff show. And unfortunately... You need a name on the kickoff show. Alicia Fox versus Dana Brooke is not going to make you tune into a match on the kickoff show, so they need a name on this. So Sasha she's on Why not Bailey? I don't see Bailey on the guard. I don't want to see Bailey. I don't think Bailey's interesting. She's I don't think she's a she might, she might still be recovering a little I bit. Think, I, don't think fans, I don't think fans are really yeah. into Bailey. They're, right they're not. They know Which that. Which makes more sense. Let for me just say this, she this whole, as, as, as a whole, the match card is weak except for the main event. Uh, yeah. I agree. Uh, it's weak. I, I thought the last pay per view was match card was weak too, though. And I thought that was okay. This is, so this is a weak. This is a weak. This, this is a drop from the from the last pay per view. Can we agree I there? Think, I think weak is being complimentary of this card. To be honest. With you. <laughs> okay, I thought well, you were gonna go the other let's, way. Let's, let's really think about it. <laughs> you got the main champion is not on the card, and the IC title and tag team champions. Yeah. Are both in the same. Match. I think I think your first point is is a big part of why this is hurting. The champion should be there. Champion. He should, and he's absent. Uh, cruiserweight division: Jack Gallagher and Brian Kendrick versus Cedric Alexander and Rich Swan. Is that something you care about? Nope. The real, the real kickoff match. <laughs> the real <laughs> kickoff match, right? <laughs> and they could, they could, they could have swapped that out. I think. Uh, th- let's just for sure. let's go back to the kickoff match. Sasha Banks is winning. That's my prediction. Louise. Oh, predictions! I forgot about that part. Uh, 
Sasha Banks, I'd, I'd love to see Alicia Fox go over and actually dive into something meaningful, but we all know that's not going to happen. She just got a t-shirt. My prediction is Sasha Daddy Banks. wasn't she there. Her first t-shirt. Only because she complained, which I'm like astonished that actually that it worked. happened and, it, and it that it worked. worked. Uh Alicia Fox is gonna be looking up at the sky at the end of the night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Big I hate to say it. Yeah, but and I love Sasha, but Alicia at this point in her career could really use something. Man, all right, I can. I think we can agree that the cruiserweight match is is something to go to the bathroom for. And hey, no disrespect to the guy. Wow, no, the guy, it's just there's no the build up. Guy, no, th- there's no build up, and you're not interested in 205 Live. Jay, even me mentioning it, you said, eh, let's go to the kickoff. All right, so yeah, because you didn't give a prediction. This is a prediction so, episode. So predict. Okay, my prediction for the cruiserweight tag team match is going to be Cedric Alexander and Rich Swan going over Jack Gallagher and Brad Kendrick. I have uh, Jack Gallagher and Kendrick going over. I have no idea because I feel like WWE never. It's just like doesn't they, matter. Nothing's gonna come out of this. They never match. know what they do with the cruiserweight division. To be honest, I'm sorry, I have right. no idea. But I do think probably you're gonna see the faces win this one because I don't think you're gonna see too many faces win in any of the matches. We touched on Oscar versus Emma. I think Emma is there to take the pinfall to make Oscar look very dominant, which is a great plan. Okay, that's no, cool. I agree I, with I don't it. I think it's a great plan. But, but I feel like someone a little higher than Emma should have been in that spot. I know, uh, not higher, someone lower. Really? Yes. Really? Why? First of all, really? Julia? Why are we disrespecting Emma? No, she's but got great given where talent. she is on the card. She's there to take I, that, I feel that like quick this dominant this fall. This should have been a Dana Brooke spot here. Or the, okay, but yeah, uh, I, sure, no problem, mm-hmm. no problem, either I, or. I I, I would have liked to see. I, honestly, I would have liked to see I would Emma, seen Emma fight Alexa, Alexa Bliss. I I think I would have liked to see Oscar fight Mickey James and have Mickey James take that pinfall. No, because that they could have built NXT, on though. their great no. match on they're, NXT. But they're rebuilding Mickey James again. So why fall but why? victim by Oscar's but why, dominance? Why are we rebuilding an old Mickey James? They don't James? want to do that. Why put in that are, are effort? I, I don't know. But, they, but they're, why, 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 they're why are we making an old Mickey James interesting? But they're in that process. So Mickey why James feed she's her in to there to, She's in there to be gold us and take pinfalls from the people that are yes. coming up. Exactly. That's what she sure. should be doing right now. But not and from make Asuka. Asuka look good. I, from Asuka. She won't be they, they already had the history. They already had the history. Man. As soon as Asuka came out, Mickey James should have said, boom, I'm stepping up. I'm taking the mantle. She beat me already. I don't want to beat her. So you're predicting Emma is going to win. I want to predict Emma. <laughs> but Asuka's going to win. Julia, okay. you don't want to predict that. Jay, do what's your prediction? Predict that. Are we really going to ask for my prediction here? Like, we know Asuka is going to annihilate Emma. Yep. Sister Abigail versus the Demon King. Are you sold on this? This is the worst match on the card. This is freaking horrible. And I hope, I hope as a wrestling fan, I pray that they prove me wrong. No. This is going to be horrible. And this it's, is, a, not, it's not going to be a Demon King. It's going to be Bray Wyatt. It's Bray. It's gonna be, <laughs> it was like some face be, paint. <laughs> it's going to be Bray Wyatt. And then it's going to be Finn Balor. And Bray Wyatt goes over this one. No, you think so. The demon. I King think. Does. I think actually, Sister Abigail. The only thing I'm I'm intrigued about about this match is that Sister Abigail makes her debut. Well, I hope Ab- we saw Sister Abigail like we a saw Rosemary. You saw what she's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, gonna be no, no. We we seen like Bray side of it, but I think they actually put a person involved in. I hope that's what I'm hoping. And if they don't, damn you, WWE. If you don't, yeah. I don't can, know. I, can I can I tell you what's gonna happen? I think we're finally gonna see what we've been predicting on the unsanctioned podcast for weeks now. What is that? We're going to see Bo Dallas team up with Bray Wyatt. You think so? Listen, why is Curtis Axel on no, Raw? Well, the apparently they were weeks. like uh, Bo and Bray and, and illness. They were all sick. Yeah. 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 So hmm. maybe that's why. But still, they could, they, could, they could use you that. The brothers that. got sick at the same time. Yeah. You believe that? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe it's Jojo Offerman as that. Sister Skeptic. Abigail. You believe that? <laughs> Skeptic over here. Jo- Jojo Offerman is This is a horrible Abigail. match. I think it's going to be stupid and campy like the Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton match was back in WrestleMania. Horrible. Smash WrestleMania. Yeah. They're going to do it's a lot of suck, stupid suck, and I'm so mad at that. Dumb trick Finn things. Balor needs to be saved from the storyline. These guys are too good of workers in the ring yep. for them to be doing campy stuff. I hope so. they, they ditch this they both lose. after TLC. I hope they both lose. I second that prediction. I hope they both lose. Jay, what do you got? I don't want them both to lose because that means this freaking thing will continue on. I want it <laughs> but I think Bray Wyatt goes over. Mickey James versus the champion, Alexa Bliss. Miss Bliss. Let's go, let's go Natty style with what she picked up and what she earned in her career and go with Mickey James. That's my prediction. No. Yes. 
Louis. Absolutely. No, no, no. Here's yes. the real question. Do you think Mickey James wins the title? Yes. Possible. No. Oh, Big geez, possibility. Louis. My heart is open right now. Absolutely not. Equal Absolutely opportunity. Not. The disrespect I, I, on the table right listen, now. Listen. Mickey James, guys. No, listen. No disrespect to what Mickey James has done and has been. But Alexa Bliss is the hottest but, thing in the Raw Women's Division. I see as a possibility, maybe not my prediction, but as a chance because WWE loves to build and pad, P-A-D, pad stats. They're stat padders. Mm. And have Mickey James go over and quickly give it back to Alexa Bliss to stat pad. Her championship reigns. I can see nope. that, but that's too much hot potato with that woman. And at the same, it, 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 but at the same time, giving Mickey another, another. No, no, no. Another, another level up. No. Here's the reason why I say no. Okay. Jay Holland, everybody. And here's my prediction: WWE is fattening up Alexa Bliss for Oscar to take the title. I agree. And if you have Mickey, uh, excuse me, if you have Alexa lose that title to Mickey and win it back quickly, it. It's not as appealing as the streak of the title. You get what I'm saying? Like, you want to make sure that Alexa has a nice, comfortable, long reign. So that way, when it comes to Asuka, it means something. I just feel like they can't play hot potato with the Women's Championship and Cruiserweight title every month. So, well, I mean, I think it's time for yeah. one, of those, one of those championships to get some stability. Well, the Women's Championship has had stability, like, outside of the, the one week difference between Sasha. I mean, you got Sasha that, Alexa Bliss before they got Sasha that's, and Charlotte. That's the padding. That's the stat right. padding So there. many people in the past few months have held that one. I think that's title. the way the stat padding comes in is with right. Sasha. They yeah. want to pat stat with Sasha. But when you look at Alexa, they're definitely going to hold it on her because they want to give it to Oscar Oscar's, eventually. Yeah. They need to, I do need Oscar to come up and, and be the dominant heel. Yeah. Back to the well, cruiserweight. Or it should be a face. Or it should uh, be a tweener. No, no, to beat a dominant Oh, yeah. But uh, it, it, my prediction is that... Uh, Alexa Bliss goes over. All right, back to the cruiserweight division. Your boy, Jay, Enzo Amore versus Kalisto, the champion. My prediction is, as much as I hate to say it, Enzo picks it back up to become a multiple-time cruiserweight agree. champion. I think, well, I think, Enzo I think Amore, this is the only time we agree. I, I think Enzo Amore is going to yeah. take the title. That's all I want to say. Mm-hmm. The Jadunzo. Not what I want to happen. The but realest champ in the room gets his title back. To be honest, though, it that. kind of is what I want to mm-hmm. happen just seeing who he's fighting. <laughs> Kalisto. Like, uh, Kalisto. Yeah, yeah I don't want right. to hear any more. Because Kalisto's but, not you know, hold down the division. But, you know but Kalisto belongs in the Cruiserweight division. Absolutely. He absolutely belongs right. in it. And he absolutely belongs in the main picture for that title. But I think having a hill, hill champions are always going to draw more eyes than face champions. All right. On to the main event. The only tables, ladders, and chairs match on the TLC match card. Hmm. The Shield versus The Miz, Cesaro, Sheamus, Braun Strowman, and Kane. Here's my thing. Usually in TLC matches, there's something hanging from above the ring. True. <laughs> there's nothing to hang here. So to me, it's it's basically an unsanctioned match. <laughs> it's just, just hardcore. everybody just go crazy. Still cage match. Yeah. No, no, not even the cage. Just they're not in the cage? No, nope. there's no cage. Damn, I was hoping they were in the cage. They had that cage match at Raw. Oh, you're right. Yeah. It's just tables, ladders, and chairs with a pinfall winning mm-hmm. the match. It's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. It's going to be crazy. The Shield's going to win. For sure. Who? The Shield, the Shield will definitely win this match. How? Without I question. Not I'm, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with you. I think the Shield is going to pull it off, but how? How are they going to do it? They're going to incapacitate Kane. But you can't break them up after they win so dominantly no. against five. No, it's a, like, it's a big one-time stars. thing. No, it can't be if you have them go over. It's a one-time thing. Why have them go over five main event I don't guys, think power it's a one-time players? thing only because Survivor Series is coming up. True. Survivor Series is coming up. It's, a, it's, a, series it's, a, it's a, five you know, people you for need, a reason. You need, you so know, you, you think this team. team shield with two other people yeah. coming yeah. up? Yeah. It's it's five people for a reason. They're facing five people for a reason. Here's my thing. They're going to win this match. The Shield, without question, they're not going to build them back up just to have them lose in their, you know I mean, their reunion match. They're going to win this match. They're going to incapacitate Kane. They're going to incapacitate the bar. It is an elimination, right? No. No. Okay. They're going to incapacitate the Miz. Matter of fact, the Miz is taking a pinfall. The Miz is not even going to be in the match. I don't think the Miz is going to take the pinfall. I think you're going to see the Miz in the manager role. I think you're going to see the Miz no, being Miz like. No, Miz is in the match. Miz, Miz is going to be out there in a suit, 
He's gonna take bumps. He's gonna be out there in a he's, suit, he's in the running match. around, causing trouble. You think so? He's being not going like, wrestling gear. He's gonna be like, I don't even need to be in this match. Right. He's in the match. It's already announced. Miz takes the pinfall here. I, 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 I honestly don't see the Shield winning this match, only because Survivor Series is coming up. You got to build Survivor Series up some way, and having these guys lose on this pay per view allows you to do that. So I, I think you see Miss Cesaro, Sheamus, Braun Strowman, and Kane, and whoever else they want to throw in the match beat the Shield. Good prediction. What about you, Luis? I'm I'm going Shield. I agree with you. I'm going the Shield all the way. But my thought is that if you have them go over, there's no way you can make this a one-time thing. I don't care if one of them turns on each other or whatever. If you have them go over, five of your main event superstars – in a three-on-five match, you cannot break them up because then you did all that for no reason. I don't care what the storyline is. You just made five of your main event players look bad. So if they go over, it's not a one-time thing. I don't think I don't think it makes them look bad losing to the Shield, honestly. Um, people want to see the Shield, and I think that's their way of sending them home on a happy note. Um, I don't think it hurts either of them. Like I said, it, I see the Miz taking a pinfall. So that way it doesn't hurt Strowman. Kane, it doesn't hurt Kane. Um, the only one who can really take that loss right now is the Miz. I think you're going to see the Hills win this one. I think you're going to see the Hills win this one. Hmm. Very interesting. Just out of straight dominance, outpowering, outnumbering. I don't know how they're going to do it, but the Hills are winning this match. Okay. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. TLC predictions. Beef predictions as well from this past week, week and a half in wrestling. A lot, of, a lot has been going on. Unfortunately, the TLC match card is not that strong. I don't think you're missing much if you need to stay out a little later that night. Maybe just see the main event and a couple highlights from the matches before. I'm not trying to discourage you, but it could have been a lot stronger. It could have been a lot better. It's definitely a drop from the previous pay-per-view. It's definitely a fill-in kind of night. I'm Luis Vasquez for the Unsanctioned Podcast. You can follow me at Luis Vasquez 617 on Twitter. Jay Holland, you can find me at J-O-C-D, J-A-Y-O-C-I-T-Y, unless it's Facebook at that 781 at the end. And you already know where you can find Mr. Julio June. Get that pigeon out. Get your eagle out. Whatever endangered type of wildlife, get that out, because that's the only <laughs> way you're going to find me. There it is. And as always, the Unsanctioned Podcast is... A resident of FightBoothPW.com. So a huge thank you to them for hosting this podcast. Why do you sound like, like Price is Right <laughs> announcer? Thank you I want to make sure that FightBoothPW gets its due. They host it. They put it up in a timely manner. They're great. So everyone at FightBoothPW Towers, the unsanctioned podcast, thanks you for your service. <laughs> for your service. Thank you. Was that presidential? Was Thank that presidential? you. you like that? <laughs> well, you already know. Like I said, shout out to Fight Booth PW. That's shout right. Shout out to everyone listening. And make sure uh, all artists who want to submit their outro tracks on Sanctioned Podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you follow us across social media at Unsanctioned PW. And of course, it wouldn't be official without the line, man. This Hit is the, the Unsanctioned Podcast. We are now signing off of your airways, man. We're no longer sanctioned. Go home. Peace. Talk, talk. Gotta bring the city back. Let me know we still here. Never gonna stop. Keep rolling like a wheelchair. Can't be shook. You know the wall smell fair. Throw them in the trunk. Turn your man to a straight stick. No tire, just money so fire.